How does the new patent law affect GMO foods? <laughs> I have to say, I'm not sure about that one. Well, it'll be interesting with feed corn, right? Mm -hmm. they've, they've had this whole thing about feed corn. <laughs> so the idea was that in certain parts of Iowa, they, they actually were selling GMO feed corn, and then they started planting it and finding out that it was getting in other crops and then making additional mm -hmm. uh, changes. I think what you're saying, this gets into the natural laws issue, and I think that that was one of the big issues is can you patent a genetically modified food uh, I just mm -hmm. I just find it fascinating. I think it's going to be a what in the genetic modifications. Uh, how many people up the road in GlaxoSmithKline are are doing genomics drugs that just got eaten by the BRCA gene issue? We're in a brand new world, guys, on, on that kind of stuff, and and it's going to be it's going to be fascinating. When I read those new patent laws I, and listened to the NPR, I think it's going to be fascinating. I don't know. Well, the, again. The issue is, if it's non-naturally occurring, then you're going to be okay. The problem is we don't know, we don't know what naturally occurring <laughs> is. So you create it, you plant it, and it crossbreeds with another crop. Who the hell knows what natural is anymore? Well, see, that, and that's part of the reason why when we draft claims, we indicate a certain percent sequence identity because there's going to be some natural modification as you're trying to exclude those, but you don't necessarily know, you can't necessarily do that. So we, we really don't know what's gonna happen.